Don't you ever want to just break things? Well, in today's video, we're going to show you how to do that in Godot. Okay, here is the object we're going to break into pieces. Uh, if I go into wireframe mode, notice how it's a pretty simple mesh, not too many polygons. And if we look here at the names, notice how every name ends in dash col. That is how uh, Godot knows to add a collision object to it automatically when you import. This is just a, a way to save a lot of time. And all right, the first thing we're going to do is export this as is because we need a before. This is what the object is going to look like before you smash it. So we're just going to go up to File, uh, Export, GLTF, and we're going to export it as uh, jar.glb. Okay, uh, now we have the whole version. Now we need the smashed version. So let's select the uh, uh, main part of the jar. Come up here to Object, down here to Quick Effects, and select Cell Fracture. And uh, the source limit, we're going to set the source limit to the number of pieces we want to break it into. Uh, 12 pieces should be fine. We don't want too many. Too many pieces is just going to slow down the game engine. And here we have uh, 12 different pieces of the uh, base. Now notice if we uh, take one of these pieces away that uh, we still have the original copy of the jar behind it. So we don't want that. So uh, we're just going to come up here in the inspector and just delete that. And now we're going to do the same thing with the lid. Uh, object cell fracture, uh, quick effect cell fracture. Uh, let's break this into maybe eight pieces because it's smaller. Okay, and let's delete the original object. And now, now we have the fractured version, as you can see. Uh, let's save this as a different object, file save as, because we don't want to overwrite our original jar. Let's call this jar fractured. All right. And uh, one more time, we'll just export that as a GLTF. And uh, that should be all we need. All right, time to hop into Godot and uh, finish this up. Okay, let's start building our jar object. Let's start by creating a new 3D scene and let's rename our root to jar. And now let's drag in those models that we exported from Blender. Uh, let's open Art and click on jar.glb. Let's drag that in. And same for jar fractured. And uh, we're going to want to click on the root of each one of those objects, right click and go down here to editable children. And same thing for jar fractured, right click and editable children. And if you just look at the uh, nodes that we imported, uh, you'll notice that the root node uh, has collision on it, but the fractured uh, the pieces of the fractured jar does not. That's just due to how Blender renamed everything, and that's okay. We do not actually want collision on these pieces yet. We're going to be uh, adding that in later in code. And uh, let's close these up, and let's get these on the origin. Let's click there, uh, over to the inspector, open up the transform, I click on this arrow to reset the position and the same thing with the fractured jar as well. And one more thing, uh, we're going to need a center of the explosion. Uh, and we don't want it to be we don't want it to be just from the bottom of the jar here. We'd like it maybe somewhere more of the middle. So let's add a marker 3D. We're going to click on the plus button, open the uh, panel there, click on marker 3D. And let's move this up to just indicate the center point that all the explosion is going to be coming from. Okay, so this is sort of the basic setup, and now we're going to hop over into code to uh, be able to animate this. Oh, and uh, one more thing we need to do before we move on to the code, uh, we have to create our fragment, which is what each one of these uh, shattered pieces is going to turn into. Uh, let's just create a new scene by going to Scene, New Scene make it a 3D scene, and let's add a rigid body to it. Add a child node and type in rigid body 3D to get our root, and we're going to right-click, make this a scene root. 
Uh, and let's delete that node 3D because we're not going to need that anymore. And let's add a collision shape to our rigid body. So add child node, uh, collision shape 3D, and we're not going to bother setting the shape over here because we're going to be doing that in code. And let's just save that in as, as a fragment. Okay, and now we are ready to move into the coding phase of this project. Okay, let's add some code to our fragment. Uh, make sure the root is uh, selected and click on the plus button on the script icon up here to add a new script to it. We're going to call our script fragment.gd. And I'm just going to cut and paste the code in here uh, and uh, I'll go through it quickly. So what this fragment is going to do is it's going to represent one of those shattered pieces that flies away from the jar when it shatters. Uh, we're going to start with a class name of fragments so that we can create instances of this in other code. Uh, the lifetime is going to keep track of how long this fragment uh, is alive for before it vanishes. And the elapsed time is going to keep track of how much time has already passed. And if you look down here in the process function, all we're doing is we're increasing the elapsed time by the current delta, and whenever that gets bigger than the lifetime, then we just delete this from the scene. And uh, in it from mesh, this is going to be where we do most of the work. This is going to be called uh, from the jar code uh, when it's time to create a new fragment. And all this is going to do is uh, for this particular fragment, we're going to pass in a mesh instance 3D, which is going to represent the, the shape of the fragment. And then we're just uh, copying the global transform of wherever the, uh, the, the, the chunk of the jar was into our this fragment's transform. Uh, we are going to be creating a duplicate of that and uh, adding that to uh, the mesh so that we have the duplicate in the fragment. Uh, we're setting the transform of the fragment to the identity because we've already set the transform up here in the global transform. And finally, we are going to initiate the uh, shape of our collision 3D. We're just going to take the uh, convex shape of the fragment mesh coming in and just put that right into the shape parameter right there so that our fragment has collision on it. Okay, now let's hop back over here to jar and just notice I didn't save that. Uh, let's save that as jar.tscn. And now let's add some code to our jar. Uh, we're going to begin by clicking on the uh, plus script up here to add a new script to it. Let's call that jar.gd and create. And now I'm going to cut and paste uh, the code for the jar and then I'll just uh, go through it. Okay, let's code up our jar. Uh, first, I just need to make a couple of edits to how I set things up here. I'm going to rename jar fractured to jar underscore fractured. And let's turn off the visibility because if we look over here in 3D, uh, this is what we want to see before the jar is shattered, not after. So let's just make that object invisible. And I'm going to rename this too to explode origin. Okay, should have done that earlier. Uh, all right, so now that we've uh, made a few fixes to our jar, now it's time, now we can get back into the code. Okay, let's add in the code. Let's uh, hop back over here to the script and I'm going to cut and paste uh, the code that makes this work. Uh, just to go through this quickly, we have the fragment collision layer and the fragment collision mask. Uh, one should be a good default, but if you really want to adjust which layer and which mask your fragments appear on, you can do that here. Uh, the explosion speed is going to indicate how fast the fragments fly away during the explosion. And the minimum and maximum fragment lifetime is going to add a little bit of variation to how long the fragments stay on the screen before they disappear. Now, if you look down here in the process method, I have it rigged to explode whenever the user presses the select button. You're probably going to want to use something else for your own game, but for the purposes of a demo, all this is doing is, is just calling the explode function uh, when we tell it to. And down here in the explode function is where the magic happens. 
Uh, the parent, first, th first thing we're going to do is call get the parent uh, because we're going to be adding the fragments to the parent object, not this object. And the reason for that is we're going to delete this object in the very next frame. So it's not going to be around for us to add children to. Then what we're going to do is get our jar fractured object and go through each one of its children. For each of its children, we're going to test whether or not it's a mesh instance 3D because I found that the uh, blender um, uh, fracturing uh, method sometimes exports things that are not mesh 3D. So this is just a check to make sure that uh, you actually do have one of those. Uh, then we're going to create a new instance of our fragment uh, object that we created earlier. We're going to uh, initialize it based on this chunk of the uh, fragment mesh. And then we're going to set the flags for the layer and the mask. And finally, we're going to add that fragment object to the parent object. Uh, next thing we're going to do is set up its velocity. So we're going to just take the uh, vector that goes from the center of the origin to the current fragment and uh, multiply that by the speed of the explosion and set that to the linear velocity so it goes flying off. And finally, we're just going to set the lifetime of that fragment to a random number between our minimum time and our maximum time. And now let's test this. Uh, I've, I've already set up a test world. Uh, if we, uh, let's save the jar first and let's open up our test world as a 3D scene. And you can see this is just a simple world. We've just got a camera, a uh, world environment, and a directional light, directional light in it. Uh, let's bring in our jar, uh, which is jar.tscn. And uh, if we press the play button, we should be able to see the jar. And when we press select, we get the explosion. One more time. We can further enhance this by adding some particles. Uh, when the jar explodes, just add a little bit of dust. So let's come back over here to the jar and we will right click and add some CPU particles. And let's set these up quickly. Uh, we are going to uh, come down here to uh, geometry or drawing and let's click on mesh and come down here to a new quad mesh and let's add some geometry to that uh, so we're going to go for material override yeah I think so and that's going to be a standard material uh, albedo and let's drag our cloud texture onto that and then let's change transparency uh, from disabled to alpha scissor. And that will give us the transparent particle. Uh, next thing we're going to want to do is shape this up by clicking on mission shape. Let's make that a sphere and uh, radius maybe a little bit smaller than that. Let's make, let's make that 0.5. Let's turn down gravity to maybe negative two. And set the direction to be one. Uh, let's give that a spread of 180. Actually, now let's make that a full 360 so it goes everywhere. And let's set our initial velocity to three. Although let's also uh, increase the min to two maybe, so we don't have quite as much variation. And that's starting to look like an explosion. Uh, let's set the angular velocity to uh, to uh, maybe 180, so these rotate slightly. And oh, uh, that's min and max. I think we also have to set the flags to get the rotation to work. Uh, let's set particle flags to rotate Y. Uh, no, uh, disable Z. There we go. That looks better. Uh, maybe rotate Y as well. Okay, now we're rotating. That might be a little bit too fast. 
Uh, let's make that 80 and 120. Yeah, I shouldn't be doing as much tweaking here. That looks like a good general smoke puff. Uh, so let's change the time. So this is a one shot. And let's also set explosiveness to the max. So whenever we enable emitting on this, oops, why did that stop? We get our smoke. Anyway, I could sit here for uh, hours uh, tweaking the uh, smoke puff, but this is good enough to get the idea. Uh, let's hop back into code and uh, inject that in. Uh, let's put that in here just after we uh, queue up the freeing event. So uh, we're just going to grab the particles. Uh, oh, that's going to be uh, 3D particles. And... Now we're getting a complaint about the indentation here. Uh, that should be fine. Yeah, it just deleted it. Okay, so all we're doing is uh, when it's time to uh, send off a puff of smoke, we're just going to grab the particles, make a copy of it. Going to be adding it as a child of the parent because remember, we're deleting this node. Uh, we're going to set the emitting to true so that it starts doing its puff. And then we're just going to set the transform so it's in the same place as our jar. And if we uh, do a demo again, let's just hop back here into test world, go into 3D view. And if we run that again, here is the puff of smoke when we uh, release the jar. In fact, let's, uh, let's move that particle system up a little bit so it's a little closer to the center of the jar and run that again. Uh, let's save test world. And there we have the puff of smoke. And that is how you create an exploding jar in Godot. And here we are in a game world I've coded up. Uh, you'll notice if my character goes up close to one of these jars and attacks it, I've got it rigged to explode. So I hope you found this useful. Certainly a good way to go smashing objects in your own game. Uh, if you would like this video and would like to see me do more, uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching.